Hello and welcome to class 10 history online video lectures. Dear children, today we will start a very important chapter especially from the contemporary world and that is the first world war. Okay. Now the very first step to cracking your examinations to doing well in your examinations is to check and recheck the syllabus that has been given to us by the council. So, while doing that we will look at exactly the topics that you are required to study. So, from the first world war you will have to study the causes and there are just few causes which are mentioned like for example, the first one would be nationalism and imperialism. The first cause that you are supposed to study is nationalism and imperialism. The second one is division of Europe, division of Europe into two power blocks that we will look at it. And the third one which is also the immediate cause of the first world war will be the Sarajevo crisis. Then we will look at later the results of the war and we will concentrate on the treaty of Versailles. Therefore, your syllabus is very short. Uh, not many things are required to study except for number one, the causes, nationalism and imperialism. Second one will be division of Europe into two power blocks and the third one is the Sarajevo crisis. The next topic will be the treaty of Versailles. So, let us begin with the first world war. While studying the first world war, few things that we will have to take note of. One is the year in which the war started. Therefore, if you look at the timeline, in 1914, this is a very very important year, in 1914, in Europe, alright, we saw or the world saw the outbreak of, outbreak of the first world war. So, if 1914 was a crucial year when and if you look at the, uh, the topic also of the chapter, it is World War I or First World War. It says many things about the war. It is a first meaning there was no war before this. Next thing that is very surprising is that this war involves the whole world. Prior to this we have heard about battles and wars where we have also studied about one kingdom attacking the other, one king attacking the other or we have studied about revolutions where the Indians went against the British. But when we come to contemporary world and there we come across this chapter on the first world war, something that should strike you students who are studying this for the first time is that this was the first world war which broke out in the year 1914. Meaning there might have been many developments, there might have been many events prior to this which gave rise to the outbreak of the first world war. Therefore, now we come to the main point. Our main point is to discuss the factors or the causes which we will do it. Now, the first cause that we are discussing will be if you look at in your textbook also, these are the terms that you have to understand very very properly. The first term is nationalism okay? and the second term that we need to understand is the concept of imperialism. Right? And again we see here the use of these letters ism. Look at this, I-S-M-ism, 
is a meaning a theory a principle a doctrine a tenet a thought so here we will be discussing two types of theories two types of thoughts which gave rise to the first world war the first thought is called nationalism and when we are studying nationalism let us break the word all right we'll break up the word when we break up this word n a t i o n nation nationalism when you break it up we get into nation and what is the meaning of nation the indian nation don't we use the word indian nation nation meaning a country all right and we don't refer to a kingdom which is ruled whenever we are talking about a place being ruled by a raja or a maharaja or a king we call it kingdom earlier what we saw is that there was this rule of monarchy most of the countries were being ruled by the kings and we all know that these were dynasties once the king dies then the son used to come to the throne so we had these dynasties ruling over but after the french revolution here we come to the significance of the french revolution after the french revolution took place then even france even france now turned into a nation state meaning now we did not have the rule of kings and queens now it would be ruled by a leader therefore nation right in a nation we do not have the dynasties ruling over but we have somebody who is an able leader somebody who is fit enough to control that particular country who will come over and look into the affairs of that particular area but now we have now you all understood the word nation mahatma gandhi is also known as the father of the nation but what is nationalism nationalism is nothing but a feeling nationalism is an emotion it's a feeling it's an emotion when we sit and watch a cricket match if our country is playing against the other against any other country then we would definitely cheer for our own country that is nationalism today we as citizens of a particular nation we want to see our nation always on top we always respect our nation this feeling this emotion which talks about which talks about let me just love you right here love for one's country or nation all right love for one's country respect for one's country or nation this feeling is known as nationalism and where did this come out even during the french revolution we see the feeling of nationalism coming up in germany this feeling was to an extreme degree where the germans felt that they belong to one nation no matter whether you are rich or poor whether you are educated or illiterate that feeling existed amongst all germans therefore in europe a new trend came up the trend was that of one nation states okay one nation states meaning those states where you had a leader and the people felt they had felt some kind of loyalty towards the state they had some respect towards the state they had some uh, extreme feelings and love towards the state this is known as the feeling of nationalism but how can nationalism be a cause for the first world war today if i love my country today if i respect my country how can it lead me or how can it lead to the outbreak of a war nationalism is a positive feeling nationalism is a good feeling but how can it have an adverse effect here we are talking about nationalism but 
Let me add one more word here. We are referring to extreme nationalism. And whenever things go in an extreme, to an extreme or, you know, uh, it goes slightly higher than what is required, then it not only led to love for one's country, but it also gave way to hatred for other nations. You got it? If you have aggressive nationalism, if a nationalism, the feeling goes to an extreme level, then what will it turn into? It will turn into love for one's country, but hatred for another nation. And this is what happened in Europe also. Loving one's nation is very good, but hating the other. Trying to say that you are good and the others are bad. Trying to establish your supreme power, your authority over the others is bad. Trying to claim that your nation is first and the other one is second. That created a kind of ill feeling amongst nations in Europe, which finally led to the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. So please understand the first cause. The first cause is nationalism. Nationalism refers to a nation. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. But what was the effect of nationalism? It turned into what kind of nationalism? Extreme or aggressive nationalism extreme or aggressive nationalism. Nationalism is very good. It's very good, but aggressive nationalism is not good at all. Now we will go to another, we will go to another uh, concept, another theory, the theory of imperialism. The theory of, let me just write it down over here. Imperialism. What is the theory of imperialism? As we all know that the explorations that took place during the Renaissance period, the expeditions that were being patronized by kings and queens from Europe led to the discovery of new places, new areas and new roadmaps and routes also. Similarly, the Europeans, all right, who were now exploring the whole world, they came to venture out and suddenly discovered new places. From where they could take away, this is the word, what they were interested in is the resources. When they traveled far and wide, when they started with the exploration, they came across many areas where they could now accumulate resources. Resources in the form of, it could be minerals, resources in the form of spices, especially India, right? When they went towards the Far East, they could also get a lot of silk. They could also get a lot of golds, riches, okay? Therefore, every place that they went to, all the new places that they went to, they found that these areas were rich in resources. And the greed, now the greed also started. They wanted to take it back to Europe. They wanted to sell it. They wanted to earn money. And therefore, commercial activities also started. The greed will not end. We all know the greed will not end. People would want more and more all the time. Because of which what happened? What was the next step now? This feeling of greed now led to this concept of imperialism where one nation, now supposing if you have one nation here, if this is let's say Britain, all right? When they came to, let's say this is India, they found that this is rich in resources. So if it's rich in resources, I want to take everything. But what do I do in order to get these resources? You use the method of control. Control meaning, now you want to fight with either the Rajas or Maharajas, introduce several policies, 
introduce new reforms, new laws through which you start controlling this particular country and you take away all its resources and with those resources you start all right building up on your army you you start uh, again repairing your own economy this was the concept of imperialism then this country you know, the country that they are controlling from where they are taking all the resources from where they are collecting all the taxes the country which they are dominating would be known as a let me write it down colony it would be known as a colony so we have also come across the word colonialism british colonial period you have often heard of words like this this turned the country into a colony and once colonialism started we all know british east india company came up and then they started controlling many of our areas the french came up the dutch came up the history is there we have already studied now there was a race for the colonies race for colonies meaning who is going to have more colonies all over the world and as we all know britain used to have the most number of colonies compared to the others the race for colonies the greed for colonies all right who was giving rise to the the first world war so therefore nationalism please remember nationalism was where they are competing with each other where they are trying to say that my country is better than yours but apart from this imperialism was also very much there remember at that point of time where by controlling the colonies and later what they were doing is they were recruiting army from the colonies and making these people work on behalf of them that was very much there these two concepts these two theories were responsible for the outbreak of the first world war so regarding first world war this is the first cause that you need to study in my next class i'm going to explain to you the other causes as well thank you for watching